Pulp Fiction. <sighs> Sit down. Sit down, Dustin. But, but we're, we're not doing Pulp Fiction. We're doing Batman today. It's a masterpiece. So is Batman. But, yeah, that's beautiful. Sit down. I, Sit I down. highly recommend it. That's great. Yes. <sighs> we know, Dustin. But anyway. No, Dustin. Today we're going to be talking about the chemistry of the Batman universe, specifically Scarecrow's fear toxin. Throughout Batman lore, Scarecrow has been one of Batman's many iconic villains. See your weapon, fear toxin. Oh, having trouble. Take a seat, Alan. Uh, what, what's happening? Ah, ah, no! Help! Human, afraid. So as you saw, Scarecrow's fear toxin causes almost immediate effects of hallucinating and just being overall terrified, specifically of your worst fears. And as you saw, the toxin is both used as an injectable serum or as an inhaled gas. Batman Begins, the 2005 Christopher Nolan film, distinctively uses it in the gaseous form. So in the movie Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino does this thing where Uma Thurman walks in with- Face them. <laughs> to conquer fear, you must become fear. You must bask in the fear of other men. In the film, the fear gas is derived from a double bloom blue poppy flower that is located outside the dojo of one of Batman's greatest adversaries, Ra's al Ghul. In small doses, the poppy plant doesn't make you terrified, but it does make you slightly hallucinate. It's when you get to the larger doses that paranoia, fear, dread, all that come into play. And these hallucinations, large or small, they're all your personal fears. Since Batman's afraid of bats, he sees a bat when he's sprayed with the toxin. The blue poppy plant described in the film is actually a real plant. There it is. When dried, it acts as a narcotic and a hallucinogen. It does not necessarily, though, make you envision your worst fears. Nor does it make you feel any intense fear, anxiety, or terror, or anything of that nature. So what would make a real-life fear gas? That is a good question, Dustin. I am very glad you asked. Let's look at some real-world examples of parts of Scarecrow's fear toxin. First up is... Carbogen! So, carbogen is a gaseous mixture of carbon dioxide and oxygen. When inhaled, it tricks your mind into thinking that you're suffocating. Your brain interprets an increase in carbon dioxide levels in the blood as a decrease in oxygen levels. Your breathing quickens, it deepens, and your heart rate increases. And not to mention any anxieties or fears that will come with thinking you're not breathing will also arise. But aside from all this, carbogen causes hallucinations. Yeah, true. That's a thing. It is. It is. Corticotropin-releasing hormones. A corticotropin-releasing hormone, or a CRH, is a peptide hormone and a neurotransmitter that's involved in stress response. It is basically involved in causing general feelings of dread and anxiety. So unlike the heroin that Uma Thurman snorts in Pulp Fiction, Dustin, when she was, Dustin, sit down. I'm already sitting down. All right, stand up. Now sit down. Shut up. Next! Coincidental Bz gas is a hallucinogen. It can be inhaled or dissolved. And an inhibitor of acetylcholine, it's related to atropine. This drug does not cause any feelings of uh, dread or anxiety, but it does bring about hallucinations. Now, all of these chemicals are good and all, but none of them make you specifically hallucinate about your fears or your worst phobias, like Scarecrow's fear gas. They'd all need something else in the serum with them, something that would target the areas of the brain that store long-term memories, specifically traumatic events from the past that would cause fears. Pterodactyl and Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, is a protein encoded by its BDNF genes and is a member of the neurotrophin family of growth factors. I'm impressed, Dustin. I was half expecting you to say something about Pulp Fiction. Well, you know, it's like that one scene in Pulp Fiction where Uma Thurman was with, uh, with, uh, you know, Vincent Van uh, Dustin! She was overdosing! Dustin! God damn it. BDNF deals primarily with long-term memory, and scientists have found that irregularities in the BDNF protein have been found in patients suffering from PTSD. If tweaked a certain way by some kind of chemical agent, an alteration in the BDNF levels in the basolateral amygdala could bring up personal fears caused by past traumatic events. It is very similar to the effects seen in Scarecrow's fear gas, especially when Batman is its victims, as he envisions his parents' deaths or his allies dying. Hey, handsome. So theoretically, if you were to combine BZ gas, carbogen gas, 
and chemical agents that could specifically target and alter CRH and BDNF, you could get something strikingly similar to Scarecrow's fear gas. <laughs> This would probably be the most effective concoction of a real-world fear gas, but there is another that could potentially work. There'd be three main parts of this concoction. The first would be an herb called Salvia divinorum. The second would be a chemical called capsaicin. And the third would be an agent to alter PDNF. Salvium divinorum is a legal-to-own drug that affects the D2 receptor in the brain, causing the victim to hallucinate. And capsaicin is a chemical that causes the burning sensation in hot chili peppers. It's also in pepper spray. In higher doses, it causes feelings of panic and claustrophobia. These two substances combined with a BDNF agent could also be another potentially successful fear gas. So what about the other form of Scarecrow's fear toxin? The injected serum. That's right. In the comic book lore, but specifically in the Arkham video game series, Scarecrow injects his fear toxin via syringes. This could also be possible, but not quite the way it's depicted in the video game. Dopamine. In lengthy experiments on lab rats in a study, scientists discovered that an injection of dopamine in a very specific part of the brain, the back of the nucleus accumbens, causes intense feelings of dread, similar to the way prey fears predators. This combined with a BDNF-altering chemical agent would bring about similar effects to Scarecrow's fear toxin, but with one flaw. The dopamine injection would have to be very precise. I'm perfect. And this is Patrick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the Nucleus Cummins handles dopamine with both desire and dread. If dopamine is injected into the front of it, then you experience pleasurable feelings, not fear. The difference between the pleasurable feelings and the not so pleasurable feelings is a difference of mere millimeters. So in order for the fear toxin to have its desired effect, Scarecrow would have to inject the serum into the back of the head with surgical precision, something that he doesn't have to do in the video games. So all in all, Scarecrow's fear toxin is very theoretically possible. But not in the way you see it in the comic books, movies, or video games. Yeah, the closest one to how it's depicted is the first gas version we discussed with Carbogen, BZ, CRH, and BDNF. Even though it's the closest thing to Scarecrow's depicted fear toxin, there's one problem with it. Time. The Carbogen chemical and the BZ gas hallucinogen would take effect relatively quickly, but the chemical agents to alter CRH and BDNF would take some time. The BDNF alteration would take some time, but it's the most important factor in making sure that you hallucinate your worst fears. Which doesn't really help Scarecrow too much. Nor does the injected serum version of the toxin, which requires surgical precision when injecting dopamine into the brain. The BDNF factor is still in there though, but again, that takes more time to take effect than it's depicted in Batman lore. Unless all the concoctions had some type of accelerating agent that makes all the substances' effects happen faster, it seems the Scarecrow's fear toxin is only theoretical. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Shalom. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs>